hope you all had an amazing Halloween. Halloween is like my favorite holiday. I had an amazing time. I dressed up as Tomb Raider and I really got into it. Me and my mom really went to the craft store, made the utility belt with the holsters that she wears. Tomb Raider is a kick-ass video game character that I really love because she was like a heroine during the time of video games where there weren't that many women that you could play as. And so for me, I've dressed as a lot of video game characters that I love and adore. A couple of years ago, I dressed up as Melina and Princess Katana from Mortal Kombat. And then last year, I dressed up as Shun Li from Street Fighter, loved her. And this year it was Lara Croft from Tomb Raider. And I made a cool video, so you should check that out. Let me know what you were for Halloween, if you have any fun costume ideas for next year. I feel like I wanna do more cosplay. And I also have a fun bonus costume for my Instagram subscribers. So you can go ahead and subscribe on there and see what else I was for Halloween that I didn't share with everybody. It's kinda cute, I think you'll like it for sure. All right, guys, I'm warning you right now, this episode is going to be a little sports heavy. I'm giving some hot takes on things, but if sports is not your thing, you'll still want to stick around because I get to some fun dating relationships topics that apply to both sexes. So definitely stay tuned for that. All right, before we get into it, I just want to say Rock Chalk Jayhawk, my alma mater won big this week. Yes, against that undefeated Oklahoma team. Sorry if it was your team. I mean, that's a big deal for KU football. You have to understand because when I was at KU, we were just a basketball school. But speaking of basketball, KU is the number one seed, baby. Yes, and you heard it right here first. You will see us at the final four this year. Dare I say, win the whole thing? Bill Self is back. He's healthy. Amen to that. But who's your team? I want to know. Let me know who your team is so I can talk trash to you in those YouTube comments. Personally, you know, I'll get right with you. All right, guys, what the heck is wrong with people? I know you guys have heard this story. Uh, So Colorado athletes, uh, they were robbed while playing and eventually losing to UCLA. LA 2816 this past weekend. So the thieves, apparently they stole jewelry, cash, other personal items from the students' locker rooms, which I mean is really insane because that should be a restricted area with proper enforcement. Apparently UCLA's athletic department, they filed a report with the Pasadena police. Coach Prime, not taking it lightly. I mean, he said that most of the players don't even have insurance for those stolen items. And honestly, what kid would? Now, I know every kid doesn't have a Rolex. And I know a lot of people on the internet don't feel sorry for rich people problems. But if you wouldn't want someone doing that to you, you know it's wrong. And so we should all be against this for sure. And this is a criminal violation. And I hope they find the perpetrators. I want to see their mug shots. I want them to get dragged on social media. Here's what Colorado's Coach Prime had to say. I would expect the NCAA to do something about that this is the rose bowl he said the granddaddy of them all right i'm sure granddaddy has some money and this is not something that should just be brushed off all to the wayside colorado's football team they've been the target of all sorts of unsavory sentiments this season for all sorts of reasons but Now it's more than just online commentary. People are actually getting robbed and that's insane. Let's switch gears to the big leagues. Talking NFL now, the Raiders just fired their third coach in six years. Head coach Josh McDaniels and GM Dave Ziegler were fired this week. And if I'm being honest, The writing was on the wall. I mean, when you have players venting to the press, I'm talking about running back Josh Jacobs last month. I mean, he said he was tired of effing losing wide receiver Devontae Adams. I mean, he's been expressing all sorts of frustrations. If you watch Raiders football, you probably saw it during the game. Devontae Adams, he slammed his helmet down after QB Jimmy Garoppolo overthrew with pass that could have been a touchdown. I mean, the whole offense just looked terrible. This was a nasty game for Garoppolo. He was sacked six times, he was intercepted. And it was funny because a reporter asked Josh Jacobs what could be done to fix the offense. And he was like, I don't know, it ain't my job. (laughs) Yeah. So McDaniels had long lost the support of the team. I mean, probably excluding Garoppolo though, because McDaniels is the reason that he got that job in the first place. And now he's benched. So you got rookie QB Aiden O'Connell taking over QB1. Yeah, so we'll see how that goes. But uh, with Garoppolo, yeah, I wasn't really feeling the hire from the beginning. No shade, no hate. I mean, he's a very talented guy. But as a Vegas Raiders fan, I knew that Garoppolo wasn't going to solve the Raiders' problems. But that was honestly just a string of shaky decisions that put McDaniels in the line of fire. A lot of money was spent securing, for example, defensive end Chandler Jones last year. We're talking a three-year, $51 million deal. They paid him, what, $33 million of that last year? And that was a season he only got four and a half sacks. And then he was cut from the team after a series of off-the-field issues. I mean, over the past few years, the Raiders have come up short with their draft picks. I mean, not all of it's McDaniel's fault. And not everything that glitters is gold. Look at Gruden and his GM Mayock's first-round picks. That turned out terribly. 
Tragically, first of all, with Henry Ruggs and the fatal DUI crash where Ruggs drove up to 156 miles per hour, crashing into a vehicle, claiming the lives of 23-year-old Tina Tentor and her pet dog. Then you got Damon Arnett. That was another first round pick. Epic flop. Yeah, so apparently he's been accused of robbing Instagram models now. I mean, the New York Post has an article on it. You can go check it out. I mean, but he was dropped from the team after holding a gun up, waving it all around on Instagram, shouting, I'll kill you, threatening someone. We don't know who. He also crashed like four rental cars. Then he got into an armed dispute with a Vegas hotel valet and he pulled out his gun. He got arrested for that. He had all sorts of off-field problems, and that's not necessarily something that Gruden could predict, but the team suffered, and that falls on the coach. Do you remember tackle Alex Leatherwood? He was a 2021 first-round pick, and that didn't pan out. In all fairness, McDaniels inherited a mess, and no, you can't polish a turd, but he sure didn't make things any better. It's like the Raiders are perpetually stuck in a rebuilding year. And I'm sure Derek Carr is happy to be out of there. And if you've been following me on Twitter for the past few years, you'll know how I feel about Derek Carr. He's no Mahomes, more like a Dak Prescott. Yeah, uh, you see the greatness on the horizon, but no cigar. Derek was a good leader on the Raiders, though. I'll forever give him that. Very respectable guy. But seriously, the last time the Raiders were any good, that was like back in 2016. Ah, yes, Raider Nation. I know you remember that glory year when the team finally made it to the playoffs after 14 years and lost. But what should have been a turning point in Raiders history became a flash in the pan. Now, fast forward, here we are in 2023 with nothing to show for it. But hey, at least Vegas is hosting the Super Bowl this February. That is that. That's pretty cool. Okay, now please tell me you caught the fight this weekend. PPV, Francis Ngannou taking on heavyweight champ Tyson Fury. The undercards were very entertaining, but the main card, yeah. Oh man. Francis Ngannou just put all of boxing's heavyweight division on notice. Tyson Fury? Tyson Fury, he should feel embarrassed. I mean, judges, okay, they want to give him the win because he threw more punches. Okay, fine. But he got picked apart by a dude with what? two years of real boxing experience, making his pro debut. And yeah, a couple of months getting trained by Mike Tyson doesn't make you Mike Tyson, okay? Ngannou started boxing in what, his 20s? That's late for professional boxing. And he started in France and he switched to MMA training. A lot of the best boxers, they've been doing it since they were kids. And every day since, Terrence Crawford, he started boxing at age seven. That's first grade. But seriously, there is no way someone should be able to come into a premier professional sports league and dominate the world's best. And I'm not going to say that this is a reflection of all of boxing because there are other weight classes where nothing like that could have ever happened. I'm sorry, but you're not walking in the ring with two to three years of boxing lessons and beating Canelo. You're going to get beat down. You're not going one-on-one -on -one with Terrence Crawford, your first professional match ever. Tank Davis? your real first fight, and you think you're gonna come out victorious, yeah, you're probably leaving the ring in a stretcher. Seriously, imagine someone started playing basketball in their 20s and, and you think he's ready to go one-on-one -on -one with LeBron, Kyrie, or even ready to play horse with Steph Curry. Be real, be real. You don't start playing soccer in your 20s and then now all of a sudden you're up there with Messi and Ronaldo, like, come on. This future lyric comes to mind. Oh, that's your best, best, like, really? Back to the fight. The only way Ngannou was going to get the dub was to knock Tyson down on his back for the full 10 count. Leave it to the judges. Fury wins because, you know, that's what's best for boxing, I guess. And if you want to beat the champ, though, you, you got to take it from him. You can't leave any doubt on the table. But like I told you guys in my last podcast, the world of boxing is changing. HBO boxing, that's gone. Showtime's done after this year. In a world where UFC reigns supreme and now the double duo with the WWE, boxing better get more entertaining. And it better happen fast. So feed Francis, you know, maybe Wilder, you know, should be next. Or let's see what the rest of the heavyweight stable has to offer. And let's get the fights that you really want to see. Like, I, I want Tank Davis to go up against Shakur Stevenson or, or Devin Haney. But you know who I want to see? Terrence Crawford soon. Yeah, and I mean, he could fight Jermel Charlo, but, you know, I'm not even that hot on it after his loss to Canelo. I mean, that fight was a little boring. What we need to see is that Spence Crawford rematch. And I know a lot of you don't agree with me seeing how Spence got beat down last fight, but I won it at 154. Let's step it up a little bit. You know, Spence deserves another shot. It's written, rematch clause is real. And if Crawford really is that guy, then he shouldn't be worried about stepping up to that weight. I think people would buy the fight. I still think there's money there. I know Crawford is a little bored of it. He wants to do other things. But you know what? I would definitely go to that fight. 
All right, so we talked our sports. Now we're going to get over to dating and relationships because you guys love talking about it so much. And for the past couple of weeks, the Cheesecake Factory debate has had the internet in a chokehold. So here's what happened. Apparently, a woman refused to get out of the car on a first date to go to the Cheesecake Factory or something like that. I'm not watching all of those videos. That's too much. And it didn't really matter anyway because it's the comments and the conversation it sparked that was the best part. And so, you know, of course, I tossed my hat into the ring, fully embracing the Cheesecake Factory as a suitable first date spot. I mean, my video went kind of viral. I was quoted in some news outlets. That was kind of funny. And then I made another response video because apparently there was this list created by women of the internet that detailed 30 places that women absolutely refuse to go to on a first date. So I had fun kind of going through the list. If you haven't seen the video, check it out on my Instagram. Uh, some of the places on the list that women didn't want to go were like sporting events, bowling, family outing, which I, I felt was fair on a first date. You don't need to go meet the family quite yet. Um, Waffle House, which I think could be a fun first date night spot. Wingstop was on there too, though that was funny. Okay, so I'm getting you back up to speed on all of this because I have a theory about why talking about relationships is like picking the hornet's nest. Aside from the obvious resurgence of misogyny and the newer incel culture. Yeah, incel, you know, it stands for involuntary celibate men who often blame women and society for their lack of romantic success. Yeah, I said it. They're called Manosphere Men. Then you have the city girls who won't date a man who makes less than $100 million and lavish them with Birkin bags and Ferraris. But I'm not here to fan the flames of the battle of the sexes, at least not right now, okay? <laughs> Instead, I wanna share a revelation I had about all of this. And maybe it's obvious, but nevertheless, it dawned on me that the reason everyone seems so up in arms right now about anything relationship-related is because majority of the people on social media are at an age where they feel pressured to be in a relationship. Like I said before in a previous podcast episode, they're on the cusp or brink of marriage or they're interested in marriage or maybe they're recently divorced. So we're talking millennials and yes, the Gen Zers too. Some Gen Xers throw them into the mix. All right, so people are in a frenzy and coming in hot with complaints of their latest Bumble or Tinder link up. According to Pew Research, the average age of people getting married has increased. The average age for a first marriage for men is 30, while for women, it's 28 years old, which is very different. When I look at my parents or my grandparents, yeah, my mom and dad, they are both 56 now. They got married at 22. Yeah, my grandma, she's 89, she got married at 21. All of these millennials and Gen Zers are in this existential state of panic because they're not getting married when their parents did, their grandparents did, they should have five kids by now, all of that. Overwrought with ideas of never finding their person, amplified by negative social media posts with hostile headlines for clickbait. We're comparing expectations from the past 100 years to dating life in 2023, and I'm telling you, it couldn't be more different. Social media makes dating different. I mean, as well as societal norms that have changed over time. And also the opportunities women have to excel in career paths. I mean, check these stats out. In 1970, only about 9% of doctors were women. That's according to the American Medical Association. As of 2020, 36% of women were doctors, surgeons. That's huge ground women are making up for because not that long ago, women couldn't be doctors, surgeons. So you might need to push back having children or finding a husband. Maybe that's not your top priority. Maybe you're working at a mail room in a Fortune 500 company and you wanna climb as high as the ladder can go, so maybe marriage comes later. And there's nothing wrong with that. There's no expiration date on being a recipient of love. You aren't a leftover because you haven't found the right one yet. And you don't have to blame the sexes because you haven't found love yet. If you don't find love at 20, do you think life is really over for you? Do you really believe life ends at 30, 40, 50, and then no one ever gonna want you? That's not true, those are fears. And by the way, uh, not everyone is super bougie with their dating, okay? So this goes back to the Cheesecake Factory stuff here, all right? Um, according to internal insights from the dating app Plenty of Fish, 48% of single millennials and Gen Zers have went on budget-friendly dates because of inflation. And they call it infla dating. Infla dating. I like that. And I've said it once and I'll say it again. I feel like when someone really likes you, it doesn't matter about where you go, but it's also important not to be a miser, not to be a cheapskate. That's not cool. Okay, nobody wants to be with a stingy, stingy person. That's no fun, but 
If a woman's expecting you to splurge and spend a thousand dollars on the first day, like no, everyone has different financial situations. And so let's just be honest, let's be upfront. But if you invite someone on a date, I will always maintain you should be the one paying. All right, guys, that is our show for the week. All right, I appreciate you all subscribing, liking the podcast, and we're having fun in those YouTube comments. So be sure to join the video discussion of this podcast on my YouTube at the Dimitri Obalor. All right, guys, I'll see you back here next Thursday. Have a great week. 